Hello friends, Mandar here. I am back with another video. Today we are going to talk about several different topics. One is H1B cap lottery uh, for this year. What is happening with that? We will also talk about the NVC visa backlog. So if your application is transferred to the National Visa Center, why is it taking so long? We will also talk about the children aging out situation because a lot of people are going through that right now. And I will co cover one particular scenario in it and some very common questions in terms of job changes and interfile. So you never know which topic is going to be important to you. So watch this video until the end and let's get started. If you are here for the first time, welcome. My name is Bandar and I make immigration related videos for US and Canada. I am not an immigration lawyer, so anything that I say on this video or on my channel is for information purpose only. And for your specific immigration needs, before you take any action, you should hire a competent immigration lawyer. Now I am running a giveaway and you might want to watch this video because it has some directions on how to enter into this giveaway. This is going to be one of my significant giveaways so far, which is the Google Pixel 6 Pro in white color. So it is a fantastic phone. So if you are into Androids and Google's ecosystem, this phone is very good to you. So watch this clip for a moment and we'll start with our topic. Now I would also like to remind you that if you want to get in touch with me, email might not be the best way because I get inundated with emails, with hundreds of emails every day. So it's practically not possible for me to respond via emails. But Patreon is the best way to go because if you want to get my opinion on your situation, what I would do if I were in your situation. Now let's start with our first topic. The first topic is H1B cap lottery. So USA has started accepting the FI-22-23 visa lottery for uh, applications for the visa lottery for cap petitions. So basically if you have never been in the H-1B pool, if you are never subject to cap petitions, cap, then this might be your chance to get into the H-1B pool of lottery. So as again, it is a two-step process, USCIS will accept applications from 1st of March until 18th of March. They will give a decision on who, whose application get picked up with the lottery and then they will ask you to go through the full entire documentation request for, your, uh, for completing your application. Now the first stage is where USCIS just accepts all kinds of applications uh, with a $10 fee. So here's where a lot of employers are filing your petition, uh, maybe your current employer is filing and you may be also going through other employers as well. And I heard that USCIS has already reached their capacity which uh, for, for accepting the applications. So there are 65,000 applications for uh, CAP petitions for general and then there are 20,000 extra uh, for students who have studied master's degree in the United States. So total of 85,000 applications. They typically go with a lot more applications than that. So they will accept uh, anywhere between 100 up to 130, uh, 20 or 130,000 applications because in the first round they are going to weed out all the incorrect and duplicate applications because $10 is nothing to get in. So a lot of people actually do multiple filings and then that's when they get weeded out. Now after the first round is done and if they weed out the applications, they send an invitation uh, is selected in the first round. Even then, lot of employers do not go to the second round because they don't file their full applications. Say for instance, you are one candidate and you have applied through uh, your primary employer and also through two other employers. Now you get selected in the lottery and now your primary employers files for your petition. Now you don't need to go through the second and the third petition. So those employers may choose to not 
apply you through their uh, their uh, petition so those numbers become vacant now if the numbers re reduce drastically well, less than 85000 then the usais is likely to run another lottery somewhere around july of the month uh, july of the year so that's when some people get a second chance uh, to go through the lottery so that's what happened last year we'll see what happens this year now let's talk about nvc uh, visa backlog so you must have seen a lot of people have let me know that their applications are getting floated around uh, from a service center to service center sometimes it goes to national visa center now national visa center is in portsmouth new hampshire so it's uh, basically a one visa center where both family based and uh, employment based applications are pre processed for documentarily uh, complete so basically they want to make sure that all the petitions uh, are documentarily complete after that they go to the field offices if it's i485 adjustment of status application or it may go to the consulates if they are consular processing applications so this is where the bifurcation happens now some uh, now some of the applications are uh, shifted from say nebraska or texas uh, center to national visa center and people ask why this happens it happens because of the workload shift and then there is a pre processing that happens at the national visa center and then they go to the final destination in your jurisdiction so if you are in the boston and new york jurisdiction it goes to the local office for the final adjudication so it's not necessarily a bad thing now the only problem here is national visa center is extremely backlogged they have about 450 or 460000 applications pending that are documentarily complete now these are mostly the uh, consular processing applications that are stuck there are about 20 to 30% consulates throughout the world that are still not open the rest 70% are open but they are not at the full capacity some are at certain capacity some are only processing emergency applications but most of them are not in full capacity so that's why there is a huge backlog even in nvc and in between these backlogs there are also employment based petitions that are stuck, stuck over there waiting for a final interview and even if there is no final interview they are waiting to be located to the final destination where uh, they have the jurisdictions to process or adjudicate your application so that is what is happening at nvc but regardless due to backlog every processing center is backlogged right now and they are taking much longer than what they used to in the past now next topic let's talk about the children aging out now remember the situation where eb3 india progressed a lot up to 2015 in filing date chart last year and up to 2014 in january 2014 in uh, in the final action chart during that situation lot of indian people who were stuck in the backlog for many years finally applied for their 485 in eb3 even if they were on eb2 they downgraded their petitions to eb3 and they applied for uh, for their 485 many of these people have been in the united states for a very long time so their children may have been in uh, born in india and then they came here as young uh, young toddlers and now they are closing into 21 years of age that's how long these people have waited uh, even to apply for their 485 but now here is the tricky situation in many of these cases their children are almost reaching 21 years of age now there is a lot of questions that i get regarding their situation whether their child is going to age out in this situation or not now i want this is a very complex topic and i want to uh, make sure that i give you the right information so i am going to make a special video on cspa child status protection act and also how uh, how do you calculate your if your child's age is locked in Uh, for the purpose of uh, remaining or your pending petition now i will only cover one simple scenario in this video and i will save the rest of the scenarios for a special video which i will be making later on so what is this scenario so if you were on eb3 last year up until 1st of november so before 1st of november 2021 and if your date was current in final action chart so say for instance if your date was Uh, before 1st of january 2014 any date before that and if you had applied for your 485 including your children who are close to aging out my understanding is that their age will be locked in so no matter how long it takes for your green card to finally come because the dates retrogressed into 2021 uh, right from 1st of november um, uh, so they retrogress by 2 years but regardless if you are E, uh, final action date was current 
at the time of application of 485 your children's age your child's age will be locked in that is my understanding now put down in the comment section below if this is not true or if, if your interpretation is different i'm still studying through this espa and I, I want to make sure that i will cover all the scenarios in my future video in this particular instance if your date was current in the final action chart uh, when you applied for your 485 and if your child's age at the time of application was less than 21 years of age their age is locked in below the 20, 21 years of age as long as your children remain unmarried uh, they will still be eligible to get their green cards so this is my understanding uh, put down in the comment section below if you are in that category and if you agree with my assessment now another very common question is um, I've, I'm on EB3 uh, India I had downgraded my petition last year like hundreds of thousands of people did and now my EB2 date is current uh, and I'm with company A and I want to do the interfiling which is fine if your EB2 date is current you go ahead and do the interfile now here is another complexity and I have covered this in my previous video but it was important to cover it again is that if you want to change your job right after your you interfile so now uh, the question there are a couple of questions in this scenario and I will cover the first one now the question is if I do not enter file with company A because I'm uh, right away changing my job to company B can I ask my company B to enter file to EB2 now, uh, now here the answer is no you cannot do so immediately the reason is even if you had an approved I-140 in EB2 with company A that I-140 cannot be used by company B I-140 uh, belongs to employer. So if your I-140 approval is for M company A, that cannot be used by company B except for the purpose of recapture of your priority date. So only for that particular purpose to recapture your priority date can that I-140 be used. Otherwise, your company B will have to file a new perm application a new I-140 for EB2 in order to upgrade your petition to EB2 or file another uh, separate I-485 in EB2. So there are a lot of people get confused on this. They just think that I have a, a I-140 approved petition I-140 in EB2 category from my previous employer. Why cannot my new employer just use it? They cannot uh, except for the purpose of recapturing your priority date. So if you change the company, you will still have to go through PERM and I-140 before you can file 5485. Now, if you have used AC21 rule to change the company, then your I-485 remains intact. So in that case, your new employer doesn't have to uh, go through PERM or I-140 as long as you are okay with the category EB3 maybe after your AC21 job portability. So does that make sense? If you are still confused, send me a note on the Patreon and I will help you explain that. Now another very common question and I have covered this multiple times in my past videos. Does the clock for 180 days clock reset after you do an interfile? Now this is a very gray area, but I have a link from USCIS which clearly says your clock for uh, AC21 job portability 180 days clock will reset if you change the basis of your petition of I-140, I-485. So I will, I will read it out. If an employment-based application requests to transfer the adjustment of status to a different employment-based category based on a new I-140, the applicant may not utilize portability provision, if applicable, until 180 days or more after making an initial transfer request. The application, uh, applicant's new job offer must be in the same or similar occupational classification as the job for which the petition was initially filed. So in essence, transferring the basis of adjustment applicant application resets the adjudication clock for the purpose of portability eligibility. So now discuss this scenario with your competent lawyer and see what they say about it. Some argue that uh, the clock does not reset if the I-140 was already previously approved. And, uh, uh, but if the I-140 is new I-140 that you are applying for, then the clock resets. That's the interpretation of some lawyers. But some other lawyers say that the 180 days clock uh, resets regardless when you do the change of underlying basis of your petition of I-485. So let me know in the comment section below what your interpretation is and be very cautious regarding these job changes during these scenarios. 
so that's really what i wanted to cover on this uh, on this video if you haven't watched my previous video which was in regards to bringing your own money from india to united states do watch that because that is a very common situation i'm also working on some other topics related to finances which are very common to immigrants such as us uh, who have moved to uh, united states permanently so stay tuned to my channel if you haven't subscribed already do subscribe and hit that bell notification and i'll see you in the next one